Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're going to look at simplifying radicals with variables. In other words, simplifying square roots that have variables. So things to remember when we start looking at um, square roots inside of a variable is that the square root of x squared is equal to x. In other words, x times x is x squared. All right. So the square root of x to the power of 4 would be x squared. And the square root of x to the power of 6 would be x to the power of 3, or x cubed. So you can see, basically, that if you take the square root of any variable, basically you'll just divide the exponent in half. 2 divided by 2, 1. 4 divided by 2, 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And you'll see that pattern as we move along. So just something to remember. Um, the square root of any variable with an exponent, you just divide the exponent in half. All right. Also, when we're factoring um, a square root of 8, for example, what you're going to do is look for perfect square factors. We've talked about this in previous lessons, but you'll look for perfect square factors. So example, 8 is equal to 4 times 2. 4 is a perfect square. So we want to factor that out. And that is the same as saying square root of 8 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the reason that's important is because the square root of 4 is equal to 2. Right? Square root of 4 is equal to 2. That's a perfect square. And so we were able to reduce the square root of 8 down into lower terms of 2 times the square root of 2. And we're going to combine all of that together into a question involving a number and a variable. All right, so we have the square root of 75 x to the power of 3. We're going to look at the number and the variable separately because 75 x to the power of 3 is the same as 75 times x to the power of 3. And remember, if you multiply them, you can separate them um, as far as square roots go. So we're just going to think of them separately. What we're also going to do, as you see in this step here, is we're going to factor 75 as the perfect square factor of 25 times 3. 25 times 3 is 75. 25 is our perfect square. We also know that x to the power of 3 is the same as x squared times x. And every time you get a variable, Remember, the square root of a variable with an exponent, you just divide that by 2. But if you have an odd number, what you want to do is take out an even number and then leave one left over, just like that. And you'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to separate all of them um, using multiplication. And then I'm going to take the square root of everything that is a perfect square. So you see here the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 3 remains the square root of 3. The square root of x squared becomes x. See how we can factor that one because it's an even numbered exponent. We just divide it by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we end up with x to the power of 1. And that square root of x that's left over, because we have an odd number up here, is going to remain. So in the end, we're going to reorganize everything, put together everything that was solved completely, or factored, or square rooted nice and evenly, solve all the perfect squares. So we end up with 5 and x. And then whatever is left inside the square roots is 3 and x. And so that will remain inside there for our final answer of 5x times the square root of 3x. Okay? This is a challenging process. Let's go through another example a little bit more quickly. All right. Here's 64x to the power of 4. And for this example, again, I'm going to separate things into um, factors that are perfect squares. Fortunately for us, 64 is a perfect square. And x to the power of 4 is also a perfect square. So we're just going to separate them like that and solve. This is actually kind of a nice, easy one. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared. And so our final answer is 8x squared. Notice with this one, we have no additional factors that are still under the square root symbol. 
Therefore, 64x to the power 4 is a perfect square. 8x squared times 8x squared is a 64x to the power 4. All right. Now, our final example is going to be more like the first, a little bit more challenging. We're going to definitely have some stuff left over under the square root symbol. And notice with this one, I also threw a 3 out front. That just means 3 times the square root of all of this. So in the end, we'll just multiply whatever's outside the square root times 3. It really doesn't have much of an impact. All right. We start out by, again, looking at our number, 40. What is a perfect square factor of 40? 4. And so we say 4 times 10. x to the power of 10 is a perfect square because it has a nice even variable or even exponent. y to the power of 6 is also a perfect square because it's an even exponent. z, however, out here by itself is an odd number. You can't take the square root of z and get a nice even number. So z is going to have to sort of remain at the end. All right. Again, that 3 is just staying out front. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've done here. We've just separated everything using square root symbols. In the next step, we're going to actually take the square root of each number. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 10 is the square root of 10. Can't really do much with that. Square root of x to the power of 10, again, divide that by 2 x to the power of 5. Square root of y to the power of 6, and y to the power of 3. And the square root of z, like I said before, you can't really take a nice clean square root of z, so we just have to leave it under that symbol. Now what we're going to do is join together all the, the perfectly factored numbers. 3 times 2 times x to the power of 5 times y to the power of 3, which will give us 3 times 2 is 6 x to the power of 5, y to the power of 3. And then inside the, the square root symbol, we have 10 times z, or in other words, the square root of 10z. And that is our final answer, reduced down to simplest form. Now, it might not look very simple at this point, but um, it's a little bit more simple, I think, than when we started. And it's reduced down to lowest terms. And that is how we simplify square roots that have variables inside them and also numbers.